What's up? Welcome in Hogan Johns from the NFL Combine Radio Row. I think it was like two years ago we were here. Yeah. Together. And I feel like we're there somewhere. Yeah. And we've probably done five shows in person ever since. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit more because most of the games this year we were together. But, uh, but this feels great. It does. The whole the whole week, honestly. I mean, it's only been like 24 hours since we got here, but just it feels like the Combine. It's since, refreshing. I want to see you. Get up on that stage. That's the bench press. That's yes. not the one you want to see me do. I'll yeah. do the 40, and I guarantee you I can beat whatever Nate and uh, Robert Mays did at the at the Super Bowl. Very confident in yourself. It's oh, you I, I saw the results. I saw those results. I'm, I'll am i take them in the 40. They'll crush me in the uh, the bench press. You don't think you do 225 once? No. No? <laughs> Ken's laughing over here. <laughs> do you think you can? Yes. Okay. I can't tell you the last time I did any type of bench press. Push-ups? I, like, I don't know if I could do 125. Once. Right? <laughs> At this point. I don't know when's the last time I bench pressed. How much anything. does the bar weigh again? 45. Yeah, 50, 45. Oh, okay. I could do like 10 of those probably. The bar? Yeah. Okay. High standards. Yeah. Now, now I'm going to have Olin Cruz come after me for that. <laughs> you saw the picture last week, folks. <laughs> you heard about it on the podcast. Uh, That's where I wanted to start this podcast today. How yes. mean was that? <laughs> Very mean. I enjoyed it. It was totally premeditated, too. That photo was taken like 24 hours before I tweeted it. And well, that's, that's right. We haven't talked to you since. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I was gone. I was in Aruba. It was amazing. And thank you to everybody who bought hats after that post. ObviousShirts.com. <laughs> crushing great, it. Great product placement. Everybody was like, where can I get those? Apparently, they don't listen to the podcast enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> when we were trying to, but that's why you need like... Uh, pictures and all i have you know if if i knew that we had to take the merch to aruba to sell it i would have done it a long time ago we can go back next week we could do it more like a plan i mean come on uh anyway welcome in hogan johns here with you uh follow us on twitter at adam hog at adam johns uh, a lot of coverage today you can read me at nbcsportschicago.com of course all of johnsy's coverage kevin fishbane's here as well uh on the athletic Theathletic.com slash Hogan Jaws is where you go to subscribe to get all that. Um, and The Athletic, of course, crushing it here from Radio Row. There's more than just our content. We just saw Robert Mays and Nate Tice doing their thing on The Athletic NFL show. Um, I think there's about 100 staff members from The Athletic. I know. <laughs> you guys, you, this, college is, staff, this is your college combine. Teams, yeah, yeah. All, all the NFL teams. I hear. I think the, here. the bar at high velocity last night was like eighty percent the athletic. Yeah, yeah. Now that, how that much that random? Uh, now how much was of the that was the was the athletic paying for? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so, someone will. Uh, we had a funny bit at the Super Bowl where I was doing the rush every day for NBC Sports Chicago, and Cap ended every show that week of saying, "Hey, John Shipman says just run up the company card, <laughs> everything's yeah, good." Yeah. Did you try? Um, no, thankfully. I, You're not trying until you, you actually yeah, file it and see what happens. Yeah, then we'll we'll see. Yeah. Super Bowl in LA, not the cheapest of no. locations. Um, all right. Well, so we heard from Ryan Poles, the new general manager, the new head coach, Matt Eberflus today here in Indianapolis. First time we've heard from them since their introductory press conferences. We're getting closer to like actual decisions being made. What were your takeaways? My first thought is that they, they got the same advice that Ryan Pace would get walking into this press conference. Where I'm not going to say anything. Obviously, this is a sensitive time. Yeah. They both opened both their press conferences that way. And, and my immediate thought was, same advice as Ryan Pace got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's coming here. from somebody else. <laughs> yes, yes. Still employed by the organization. We still tried. Well, and, and here's what I'll say. I mean, I definitely think Eberflus was really guarded. In, in, like, but... More so than Polls. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like Ryan Pohl still got up there and, and um, said some things like he was what he said about the offensive line today, I thought was was something, you know. Um, now, I'd still like to know more about what all that means. So when he's say, saying it, you know, I want to be mean, lighter and faster, li lighter and faster. But, you know, if we had had more time. Something I maybe would have questioned, though, is if you look at what the Kansas City Chiefs did last year, a lot of those guys they signed were not the lightest and fastest. You know, they, they're um, – who's the – I'm just blanking on his name right now. Like, Joe Tooney? Uh, the rookie uh, that had a great season. He was, like, one of the highest-graded rookies. Oh, at, I know you're The, the center, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Come on. He's got the cool it. name. He's got the cool name. Anyway, people know what I'm talking about. 
Uh, he actually today was joking on Twitter about his own body. Creed Humphrey, thank you. Creed Humphrey was on Twitter today, like making fun of his own body. Like this is what every man should aspire for with his like big gut. And I'm like looking at this and I'm going, wait a minute. These are the guys that Ryan Poles was in on getting last year in Kansas City. So I don't know. Is it really necessary? See, when he said lighter and faster, I immediately thought of Sam Mustafer, who tried to get bigger and I don't know, maybe a little bit slower. the opposite. <laughs> yeah. But that was like the conversation yeah. they had about adding bulk and mass to Sam Mustafer so he could handle bigger defensive linemen because he was too small in the evaluation that Juan Castillo had of him. So yeah. is he on the outs? Is Ryan Poles going to be looking for potential free agents in that position? That's what I thought. Well, the bottom line is regardless of, you know, how much in the weed you want to get with the body fat and the mass index and all that, um, change is coming on the O-line. Like, that was very clear to me today. So either you're going to stick around and you're going to change your body or you're going to be gone and we're going to bring in new offensive linemen that fit more of that yeah. mold. So much of it is trying to to interpret what they're saying, right? And I came away with the impression that he liked some of the younger offensive linemen. Now, who that is can be debated, but I think probably Larry Borum and Tevin, Tevin Jenkins. Jenkins, and maybe even James Daniels, who's what, 25, 26 years old. Yeah. But didn't we just have that conversation about him a couple of years ago, about adding bulk and mass and being a bit heavier? Different philosophies here. <sighs> like, I like James Daniels, but. You know, in, in depending on who you talk to, there's different opinions on it. And I hopefully when I leave here in India, you have a, maybe a better idea because this is where some of those conversations about money start to happen and where guys fall in the pecking order. But, like, if he's going to get $10 million a year, like, has he really shown enough so far in no, his career to command no, that? No. Or is that just – and as Ryan Poles admitted today, like, you're always overpaying in free agency, regardless. Always. You're always overpaying. And we've seen that specifically with the guard market. Yes. Guards have gotten big, big contracts. You can it's, argue they overpaid Cody Whitehair. That was yeah. a re-sign. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, he hasn't played up to the Pro Bowl projections they had for him at one point. I don't think they exist anymore because the regime is out. But, yeah, yeah, Cody Whitehair's career trajectory has changed over the past few years. Well, he's been very solid and very consistent really until this past season. And then all of a sudden. When you sign a guy like that, you went better than solid and consistent. Right. Right. You went dominant. <laughs> Uh, right, and that's the one thing that they really haven't had on any of their all-align positions for a while. I mean, that goes back to the Charles Leno Jr. arguments. And he had a great season. He goes to Washington. But, like, still, where's the dominant, like, Quentin yeah. Nelson-type yeah. O-line? At least one of those You guys. need one of them. And, and I get it. It's, well, speaking of free agency, it's supply and demand, right? There's not enough yeah. good offensive tackles in the league. How often have we heard here that the – the transition for offensive linemen is just different now because of what they're doing in off in offenses in college, right? It's just different. The, it, it is. It, it is. And, and it's affected the NFL evaluations and it's affected the developmental past of some of these guys. But I, I don't know. Look at James Daniels, 25, 26 years old. You got to start somewhere. Got to start somewhere. So those conversations start here. I almost wonder if that's why you're seeing some guys. I mean, there's always offensive linemen drafted later, but, you know, and Larry Bohr may be an example of this. Like, one of the guys in college who wasn't the lightest and fastest. Like, he, but then he became lighter and faster right. with the Bears. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're seeing guys or somebody like Creed Humphrey who maybe doesn't have the greatest body in the world. But, like, at the NFL level, the game's different. So, you, you know, you, you you still want some of that. I don't it, – it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I think, without a doubt, we now know going into later – now we're in March. You know, later this month, NFL draft, like, there's going to be significant change there to that group, and that's a big emphasis. Well, well, just in terms of what we heard from Poles and Eberflus today, what he said about the offensive line were his most pointed, direct comments. Mm -hmm. Just in terms of what his evaluation currently is of the players he has or the players he's inheriting. Now, that will change in a couple of weeks, but just, as, just again, just in terms of what we heard from those guys today, most pointed evaluation we got. Now, I think the other spot on the offense – that um, he made very clear wants playmakers at wide receiver. Anybody who's listened to this podcast for the last season or so <laughs> probably knows last that season or so much last yeah. like four seasons or so. <laughs> like probably Make a play for your guy. How many times have we been saying that? Yeah, like from Trubisky to Foles to Andy Dalton to Justin Fields. So they know probably know that like my ears probably perked up a little bit when he said that. It's like yes, like. You can't just go get speed because there's a player named Tyreek Hill who's 
faster than everybody. Like, that's a playmaker. He's not just fast um, or quick. Like, you have to be able to run routes. You have to know the savviness of that wide receiver position. You have to study every single corner you go against, understand their work against that. Like, that is – you can't just rely on your raw talents at that position. You have to be a football player still. And so I love just hearing him say like, we like, regardless of how you want to break it down, the bottom line with a wide receiver is you need somebody who makes plays, make the play for the quarterback. Go find Now it's not easy to do, but at least he understands that. I think in, in this regard, I actually think Matt Eberflus said more. Okay. When he talked about having, a receiver or a playmaker who could take a screen and take it the, the distance. Mm-hmm. When is the last time that we've seen a receiver do that? I think of a couple of plays like Tariq Cohen, not, yeah. a, not a receiver, but a playmaker against the Jets. Yeah, that like but, the 70 but, yard touchdown. But that or was, something? you know, an all out zero blitz, right? That was a perfectly timed Wasn't play that call. Four years ago, too. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll go, even, <laughs> I'll go even more back to the time machine. Jeremy Langford in St. Louis against the Rams. Oh, my God. Yes. That was kind of a wild game. Yeah. Didn't Zach Miller have, like, a, a yeah. crazy long touchdown yeah. that game Was that well? the game where Kyle fought his brother? Or no, was I that think the that's other a trip one. to St. That, Louis? Different... <laughs> uh, there's one place I don't miss going. St. Louis? You like L.A.? A little bit more, little yeah. Bit more? Okay. So if uh, I stayed in a little bit better than the Dome in St. Louis. Yeah. But think about that. Yeah. Like, we mocked Bear the Bears' offense for not having a screen game. But Matt Eberfuss specifically highlighted that today. Yeah. I don't know if David Montgomery could take the house, but he could get more than seven, eight yards. Yeah. You know, Tariq Cohen's coming back or maybe coming back. You know, that's a, another topic that came up today. But playmakers, of course, they need playmakers. Right now, they only have one under contract that's returning, two under contract that are returning in Montgomery Mooney. So, like, if you look at the offensive depth chart, he obviously loves Darnell Mooney. <laughs> based on what he said today, if you missed some of the press conference, uh, you know, I asked him what, as you looked at the roster uh, or when you went into your deep dive of the eval- tape evaluation of what you have and what was left here from Ryan Pace, what did you see? And he just immediately was like, well, Darnell Mooney was a bright spot. Um, he likes the running back room, he said. So he likes one wide receiver. He likes the running backs. He obviously likes the quarterback. Uh, and Justin Fields. A young offensive lineman. Yep. Who those guys are, I guess we'll find out. But the one position wasn't really addressed today was tight end. Oh, I was going to bring that up. Yeah. Like, How does he feel about Cole Komet? Uh, maybe. Don't know. Like, 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 here's the thing. Maybe he likes Cole Komet, and we just needed to ask it. Yeah. It, no, it, I'm blaming us more than anybody. Like, I don't think anybody asked a question about the tight ends today. But at the same time, when he's listing off things he likes, he didn't immediately go right. to Cole Komet. Red flag, I don't know. Brown flag. <laughs> Orange flag, orange flag. What's a brown flag? I don't know. What's the what's the lifeguarding rules like on, on a beach? Yellow. It's yellow. A green, okay. yellow, red. The right. Red's the beach. Yellow. Beach is closed. Yellow. Yellow flag. Yeah, yellow. Okay. Like, I, I think, um, like, who's got a red flag right now? Like, uh, Darius Bird. Demir Bird. I can't Darius even get his Bird. name right after a year. That's yeah. that's my respect for the wide receivers. <laughs> no. I don't mean that. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even get his name yeah, right. Yeah, but that that stood out to me. The him not listing Cole Komet's name, who was the what forty fifth overall pick. No, was that? Yeah, he's forty fifth overall. Yeah, correct. 30, yeah, 48. I mean he's a key piece of this. You would think. I mean, it didn't it didn't work out with Adam Shaheen. Think about those like. So then you're signing Trey Burton, that didn't work out. Then you're drafting another tight end in the second round because you still don't have a tight end. Like, that that's a piece that has to work. Now, I i still like Cole Komet. And, like, at the end of the season, like, he had – um wasn't he still, like, top six or something in tight end catches? He just didn't have the touchdowns. Mm-hmm. So they, But that's the whole team. Well, like, they got to find the end zone. Well, when Poles and Eberflus were talking about having playmakers – not only could you know be game breakers, but those who are dependable for your quarterback. Mm-hmm. Guys, Justin Fields can count on. I think of Cole Komet. 
But I thought of their chemistry. Uh, I, but he, but here's the thing. So I'm trying to picture like if I'm Ryan Poles and I'm watching this tape, kind of not for the first time, but you know, mostly for the first time. Like, you know, you have somebody in your staff. Give me all of Cole Komet's plays, targets from the season, and I'm watching. I'm watching. Okay, pretty good route runner. Gets open, makes some good plays. Can kind of be a volume guy. Um, pretty dependable, I think, as a blocker. Separation's not there. How many? Tough catches though were kind of left out there. Like, oh, I know you're talking there's about. There's probably yeah. a handful of plays this season, balls that went Cole Komet's way, way. That if he made the same catch that Jesper Horstead made in Las Vegas, you know what I'm talking about? Like that yeah. incredible catch with like no room. Um, you know, I'm not saying like a game or two may have gone the other way, but there were, those were some missed opportunities yeah. that were left out there in the field. That if I'm this new GM watching this, I'm going. Man, I like this guy, but I need to see him start making these plays help the quarterback. Now we saw out. some of that as a rookie. I think of the wheel route down the the left sideline. I forget who they were playing, but you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. It was like a 45-yard completion. Yeah. Where he went over the, the defensive back. Like, he's he's done it. Here's another point, though. If if you're evaluating the tight end position and you're looking at Jesper Horsett and you're thinking, like, where the hell has this guy been all year? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Wasn't that part of the conversation we had last year? Like, this guy. And some, of those guys some of those guys are interesting to me with a new GM. And a new coaching staff, because you know he's been here for a while, Jesper Horstead. And does 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 a new coaching staff look at him maybe a little bit differently as somebody that just needs more of an opportunity? Same thing on the defensive side. Like one of the key guys on defense, I'm very curious about because cornerback is obviously a a big position to need. Like, what do these guys think about Thomas Graham Jr.? Yeah, because was that just a flash in the pan for one game, or is that somebody who was just totally underutilized his entire rookie season? I have no idea yeah. right now. Yeah, well, that's I really you have don't. To go to the practice tapes that are still available to them at Dallas. Yeah, um, but you're, there's only so much you're going to learn from those tapes. Like you, you he's got that one tape um, that was the Vikings game, right? The Monday Nighter when the whole secondary was out, and uh, it was an amazing performance for a guy making his NFL debut. And then they just like kicked him back to the curb. Yeah, you yeah. know, well, he got beat by uh, DK Metcalf in oh, Seattle. Oh, I mean, it's a mismatch to begin with. I mean, DK yeah. Metcalf beats a lot of guys. You think if I got on the bench press a little bit, then I he beat you on that. Yeah, he, he beat you on yeah. that. But DK that, like, Metcalf is ridiculous. He definitely <laughs> beat you on that. But that's another like, just in terms of the points that Eberflus and Fol- Foles, 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 Poles, 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 Pace, Foles. Yeah, yes, oh, blending together. Word salad coming out of my mouth right now. Oh, I, just hey, in my lead today, I I started writing new new Bears general manager Ryan Pace. Ooh. Oop, delete, delete, delete. Polls. Back to 2015, still in the time machine. Yeah. Um, but just thinking about their their message about fresh start. What 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 was Eberflus's exact words like? Uh, like fresh grass for them or something like that. Yeah, it's back of the grass. Like yeah, like I thought I was thinking about Chuck Pagano. That's the the uh, <laughs> yeah. the um just the so indie. That, that's it's old, an indie thing. That's old grass. Yeah. This is you know this is new grass. But how many of these I, guys I, are really gonna get yeah, fresh start? Guess he hasn't like, been to Soldier Field yet. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> bad grass. <laughs> Grass, holes in grass, uh, sand and grass. We Hallis is nice. The yeah. fields at Hallis are perfect, yeah, better than Soldier Field. Yeah. Um, but like, how does that really apply? Like, I don't know if Allen Robinson is getting a fresh start. Yeah, I don't think Akeem Hicks is getting a fresh start. Does uh, does Khalil Mack truly get a fresh start? Robert uh, Quinn. No, but. Okay, let's talk about Allen here for a second, actually. Allen Robinson, because his name came up here. And this is always something I've been wondering. You know, all the ill will that he probably has, and we know it's there. We've talked about it on the podcast. There's that whole thing with the tweets a couple weeks ago, you know, with his targets, share, and everything. It is a new regime. Like, it, like everybody's new here. So, if there's a like, let me give you a hypothetical. If there's a situation where maybe he's a guy like Ryan Poles likes, and and he says, you know, if we could put all this yeah. behind, he talked about communication, which was something we learned after the season that there really wasn't communication. With uh, I don't know, was that in your story or a different story? I can't yeah, keep a different story. I can't it's keep them some other podcast. Track. Alan Robinson was on, yeah. But he, yeah, he basically said it was. Oh, you had the Mitch thing, and then he basically had a similar story where, like, he was like, there was just no communication. Yeah, what happened there? So if they can repair that, and now 
you're not franchise tagging him. That's way too much no. money for a guy that didn't produce last year. And he's going to hit the open market. And but I don't know what the open market is going to be like for him anymore. So if all of that gets repaired, I think Allen actually liked being in Chicago. Um, regardless of all, everything that happened on the football field in the last year, you know, is there a door open? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe would a you window. Con- would you consider that even if you're the Bears? Well, it, it depends on where he's. What if it's a one year deal? Well, yeah, maybe how much? $10 million, $12 million? He's not going for that, though. But he might have. Is someone else out there offering more? Free agency. Someone will overpay. Yeah. Well, well here, here's what I would say. Where is he on your list? Is he below DJ Shark? Is he below Michael Gallup? Maybe Chris Godwin is number one. But all those guys I just talked about, they're all coming off serious injuries. Yeah, Godwin's just got like, a late injury, yes, too. Yes, just like Robinson was. Otherwise, Godwin ago. would be a guy I would sign right away. Yeah. But yeah, talk that, about a game changer, but like you're right. It's it's a kind of a unique receiver market because of those injuries where I think you have to entertain the possibility of bringing him back if he wants to be here. But Robinson should play hardball. This is a very important contract for him. Like his career is, I don't want to say hanging in a balance, but like his next contract is, is what he's looking at. Like where's... The best situation for Allen Robinson to have that next big season. Well, and I don't know if it's in Chicago. And here's another big question I have, like because like he and Justin Fields didn't necessarily hit it off in terms of production on the field. But I, I keep going back to, I don't know if you remember this. It was a press conference. I want to say in late later August, we were getting deeper into training camp preseason um, when we were having all the conversation about should Justin be playing more, should he be getting more reps, and Allen Robinson like went out of his way to praise Justin. Yeah. Like, like in a way that was almost odd because you know Allen Robinson understands what's going on in the media, and he understands, like, Andy Dalton's under fire. And that him throwing all of his support at Justin Fields is only going to fuel that fire more. And yet he did it. So, like, what... Like, does he look at, like, he just doesn't have chemistry with Justin Fields? Why would he come back? Or does he believe in Justin Fields and think that that was all more on the coaching staff? Because, like, if there's a situation where, like, is Allen Robinson a wave one free agent? Is he in that? Well, I don't know this year. I I don't know. So if he's sitting there in that second wave or even that third wave and he doesn't like the long-term offers he's getting and you're willing to throw... $12, $13 Twelve, thirteen million dollars at him for one year or something like that. Like, I just wonder if that's. I I would call all of this unlikely, but it's something that I would probably say if it happened, I would throw my support behind it and say that's a, probably a pretty good move. And uh, I wonder if I wonder if there's still like a small percentage well, chance just, that that could happen. I'll just go back to what Eberflu said. The receiver, the playmaker, that could take the short screen and go the distance. Is that Allen Robinson? No, because he's never. No. But that's. Is, is he a take the top off type of guy? No. Uh, but that's where. He, yeah. I mean. He, and then we heard polls talk about how, like, the f- number one receiver should be able to do it. Or that was Eberflus, right? Right. You know, the number one guy should be able to do it all. Can he do it all? He can, but just not to the level of, like, the top level of wide receiver, which was always the Bears issue with throwing all the money at him that he wanted. Yeah. You know, he's but even as much as as good as Darnell Mooney is, like, I think Al Robinson's still a better overall wide receiver. Than Darnell Mooney? Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, Mooney could surpass him soon, but I I still think, like, Mooney's ceiling is still in kind of that same area where, like, it's that fringe one or two guy. Yeah, but you have a couple wide receiver twos. Ah. That's the problem. Yeah, and they yeah. really do need that guy who can do it all. I can tell you one so. thing, though. They're not the only team down here talking about adding playmakers. Right. I mean, it's a common refrain from all these teams. Well, Chris Ballard was, like, yelling into his microphone. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> during, was yelling. During, during Brett Peach's <laughs> press conference. <laughs> like, he was talking about adding playmakers. Like, oh, we need more playmakers. Oh, uh, and uh, he made it very clear how he feels about Carson Wentz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't think Carson Wentz coming back. Yeah, just just to paint everybody the picture, if you're watching or listening, they have these press conferences that run next to each other. And for some reason, Chris Ballard's mic was like turned all the way up. Was it up or was he just yelling (laughs) Yelling into it? (laughs) Yeah, I think everybody, at least from the media side of things, got a good chuckle out of that. He's he's uh, he's he's a good talker. 
Yeah. JJ Stankovitz is very lucky. Yeah. And he's got that Texas accent too. Yeah, where yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. No, I like Chris Ballard. Uh, oh, that, we know. We know. Yeah, we've yeah, we made that very clear. well established on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't go to Chris Ballard's presser. I just caught some of it. Everybody it was... went to Chris Ballard's presser. <laughs> well, <laughs> I heard it up in the <laughs> upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Could hear it from there. Uh, so yeah. You gotta uh, have fun. Yeah, you absolutely. gotta have fun. Um with Eberflus today, you had to like dig a little bit more for specifics that aren't necessarily like headline grabbers today, but things that you will be able to reference later. Like I just I loved his football answer to what do you want from your three technique? It was just very simple. When you're one on ones and when they zone run away from you, stay in the B gap. <laughs> yeah. Like it was like he was talking to us like as players on yeah. the team. Like and but that's cool. Like that's that's the job. Mm-hmm. That's your assignment. Do the assignment. It's you know, the like, I just I actually like that answer a lot. Oh. But when you when you brought up spe- uh, specific players, mm-hmm. Roquan Smith, I think was referenced, and Jalen Johnson. Yes. You got some non answers. Yeah, I still don't understand that. Like you really don't know if Roquan Smith's your Mike or Will. I don't believe that. Yeah. I think they know they have a difference maker in Roquan Smith. Yes. I don't know if they're quite there in believing the same about Jalen Johnson. See, that's interesting to me because I like Jalen Johnson a lot. I think I think he lived up to the hype last year. And uh Whoa, whoa, whoa. That tape is full of well loafs. Okay. For Jalen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, one I, specifically where he didn't touch that guy. Yeah, that, that was yeah, bad. Yeah. That was bad. That was bad. I'd, I guess I'd have two to, of them, I think. Well, and that's a good point because those are the things that they just don't want to see. Yeah. So it's they don't want it at all. And that's going to be interesting. I mean, that's going to be something that, you know, unfortunately for these guys, for the coaching staff, they don't know how the players are going to react to this. Yeah. You know, they can target guys in free agency in the draft that they feel like will respond well to this type of coaching and the constant refrains of hustling. Um, but like I talked to Khalil Herbert at the Super Bowl and it was already like you could hear in his voice when I asked him, like, how are you going to respond to this? Like, and it, and it was like, oh, already like conditioning, like, <laughs> you're like, like almost like they're it's dreading fun. April yes, already so when good. they get together a month from now at Hallis Hall, like. But they're all fully aware of what it's going to be like. But my point is, until they go through this, they're not going to know how Jalen Johnson responds. No. You know, you, you I think Jalen Johnson will respond because he seemed to be one of those guys in the locker room that fits everything else they talk about. Loving football. Um, Polls talked about today. We want guys who want their name etched in the stadium. I love that line. You know, maybe the new stadium. But, you know. Yeah. Soldier well, field. well, that applied to like you know the the top tier free agents and guys like yeah. that. You know, the the top tier players you want on your team. I don't know how many he's got right now. Maybe Roquan Smith is the only one who really right. feel. But I think a guy like Jalen Johnson could become that if he embraces this style of coaching. Yes, and my guess is he will. He's still young enough. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I think there was clearly. You know, there was that whole, like, being late to the meeting, getting fined thing. They're like, I don't know if he was always feeling Matt Nagy's vibe last year. but Well, when he's being graded for loafing. That's true. Could be a bit different. Could All be right. a bit different. Adam Johns, anti-Jalen Johnson. I'm not. Let the record show. I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, What else do I have here on uh, Eberflus? Oh, the one thing, and like this wasn't a surprise, but I took note of it. Like he talked about how, like in the meetings they've had so far, which is all just coaching staff and their new staff members, but like their constant meetings, going over tape. Um, he said they've been having these in the morning. Like he's been kind of switching between all three phases. Yeah, you know, he's been, and and that's what, something we talked about a lot in the coaching search, being that CEO type uh, coach. And granted, we're not in there, we're not seeing it, but he kind of unprovoked brought that up today is like kind of how he's been handling it. And I think that that's a good, they've thing. also created these player profiles like on tape mm-hmm. of certain player characteristics that they're targeting uh, that applies to free agency and the draft. Now this is all well and fine. Every team has their different process yeah. and whatnot. You know, polls has been through different evaluations, grade well, grading scales and whatnot. Well, and you use the term like so- bears fit today. Yeah, so, like well, that's something Pace, Pace has. has. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. yeah. That's for five new. characteristics. And stuff but like what's that. interesting yeah. about that is a lot of the scouting staffs the same. Yes. So 
you know, that may actually be some of polls um, adjusting to what's already in place. Because, you know, for our listeners who might not know this, like the, the, we've had all this coaching turnover, but the scouting staff runs on a completely different calendar. Yeah. They run from the draft to the draft. So the Bears are going into this draft where, yeah, they have a new GM. They have a new assistant GM and Ian Cunningham and the different personnel guys they brought in. But, like, most of the bones of the scouting that was done in the season – the college season, that's all the same. That was done by the scouts that were already here. Yeah. And I did find that interesting today when he, he kind of went out of his way to to compliment the current group. He and, said he liked them multiple times. Yeah. Now, I heard that. I'm like, well, like you said, their contracts aren't up yet. And and I firmly believe there's still going to be changes. Oh, there will be. Yeah. There, there will there be. always are. Well, and he's probably, but he's probably also gelled with a few of them. Yeah. You know, it's fair. That's yeah, fair. You know, and they, some of these guys have survived. Like he did in Kansas City, yeah, multiple that happens. Regimes. Even college scouting directors can. Um, like I don't know what's going to happen with Mark Sadowski, but you know, for now he's still in there. He's the college scouting director, yeah. and um, you know, and he's, he preceded Pace. Yeah, he's Jeff been with Shiver. The, Sam Somerville preceded Pace here in Chicago. Yeah, there's there's guys on the staff that have been here for a long time, and there's something to be said for keeping some of those guys around. And Poles mentioned at his introductory press conference that he's open to that. Yeah, because he experienced that in Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. And there's only so many good scouts too. Yeah. Some of these guys you don't want to have lose good reputations. Yeah. 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 Um, so and Somerville and Sadowski have great reputations around the league. So we'll see how but I there will be change. There definitely will be. Anything else from today that really stood out to you? No, he likes the running backs room. I mean, there's I do think they recognize the opportunity they have here with Fields on his rookie contract. Mm -hmm. Now what that means in free agency and the draft. We'll have to see, but they should feel happy. They should be aligned. You know, they haven't played any games. They haven't drafted anybody yet. No free agency. You know, free agency hasn't technically opened yet. No one has spurned they, them yet. They signed Joe Thomas today. Who's that? Like the, the, the tackle? Yeah, the Hall of Fame left tackle. Oh, good. Who played 10 straight years. Now he uh, lost. No, no, he lost weight. He well, those good. linemen, they go one way or the other. Right? <laughs> I think we know this. They yeah. either go Olin Krutz or they go the opposite way. Yeah. Um. Joe ha Joe has gone the other way, uh, he, or, or the the good way. Yeah, he's yeah. looking good. Yeah, well, he fits Joe the Thomas. profile now. We're joking because they didn't sign him; they signed another linebacker. No, they signed a guy named Joe Thomas, but, the linebacker. He used to play for the Packers. Okay, so I think his depth piece. Yeah, you know, it's, was I think he was on a practice squad. It's March. Year. It's March. Former Cowboy Joe Thomas. He was. Yeah, I liked him. He Give just, me the scouting report right now, Ken. Yeah, I liked him. Didn't think he got to play much because uh, obviously they got Micah in there. Leighton Van Der Esch was hurt. When Leighton was hurt, he uh, played some pretty valuable snaps for him. So, yeah, good veteran guy. Uh, nice little piece. Yeah, I liked him. There he's, you go. De he's definitely getting cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't take my word. What, what the hell do I know? Though? Don't listen yeah. to me. Yeah. He's cut. I like him. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you just got cut right here. No, yeah. no that's not it. <laughs> uh, we signed the wrong Joe Thomas. You know, it's been a heck of an offseason for the Bears, though. They've signed Lamar Jackson and Joe Thomas. <laughs> Good observation. I think those are the only two players they've yeah, signed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not are the those, household names you want, but yes. Are those those might actually be Ryan Poles' two first signings? <laughs> yeah. That's tough. Lamar Jackson. Because uh, Lamar Jackson was Ryan Poles, right? Or was that the guy they signed like when they didn't have a GM? And I was like, who's signing this guy? Oh yeah, there was that um influx period where yeah. there were like Ryan Pace was fired, Ryan Poles wasn't hired, they're interviewing a bunch of candidates. That's and, when they had to sign like their future contracts. Yes, yeah. It was like Bill Polian. Bill Polian was the Bears GM there for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine? Like George McKay. Hey, can you? I don't, I don't know who these guys are. Bill, tell us what to do. Like, I've never heard of, <laughs> I don't know, George, Peter Eilson. Just <laughs> sign him. It doesn't matter. Just sign him. <laughs> uh, that's a good point. We need to go get some steak. We do. You have uh, a big party the, uh, to yeah, go to the that, athletic party. that I was not invited to. Maybe so, next year. I'm not bitter at all. Yeah. I'm actually going to go take a nap. It's going to be glorious. Oh, takes naps. Before you go to St. Elmo's, you should take a nap. Uh, I needed you a should. nap after dinner last night. You, should, should. <laughs> you did. <laughs> <Darn>. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's wrong with you? First night in Indy. I was tired. People were excited. You were just like, I'm ready for bed. Yeah, I was excited for like 10 seconds, and I'm like, oh, no, I'm full. We had a filling meal, and then it's like, all right. Um, this is the indie experience. It's good. It, like for real though. I'm, I'm, and where's the, do we know where the combine is next year? Or, it's not here though, right? 
that they haven't announced where it's going to be. They haven't announced it. It's supposed to be either in Dallas or L.A. I think that's those were two of the cities. Hmm. That is more than a three-hour drive, Kent. Yeah. We're Indy again. I like it here. I like, like it here. I like they the flexibility. Of, move it. I like being able to go they home are. whenever I want. I, mean, I, I, I call Dallas. You guys come to Dallas, stay at my house. We'll eat some, eat some barbecue. It'll be great. I will come to go. Dallas. I won't stay at your house. I will eat a, oh. your barbecue. <laughs> okay. Deal. It's two out of three. Yeah. It's pretty good. That works. I haven't been to Dallas. We're going to Dallas this year. Well, the Arlington. Arlington, Dallas. What did, yeah, the Arlington area. Could be Dallas. two teams in Arlington. Uh, wait, what? See what I did there? Arlington Park. Heights. Oh, yeah. Heights. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Too soon. Not if the mayor has anything to say about it. <laughs> They're moving. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> All right. Uh, we should get out of here. Good stuff today. Though we'll be back Thursday. I think Kevin Fishbane will be here with that. Yeah, we'll see. Too. I don't know. He doesn't like doing podcasts with me anymore. No. Apparently. This is big time. He, yeah. He wants his own show. I gave him one last chance. I said, hey, you look like you're done with your writing. You want to come do the podcast? No, I'm good. No, he said he want to go sit in his room for a little bit. Like he got in trouble or something. <laughs> He's just mad still about my tweet last week, probably. That's all right. Uh, to see those tweets, they're on uh, at Adam Hogue. He's at, at Adam Johns. You can follow us on Twitter, read our work, NBCSportsChicago.com, The Athletic, TheAthletic.com slash Hogan Johns. Please do subscribe. Uh, find us on YouTube. If you're just listening, you want to check out what this, uh, what the uh, bench press behind us all looks like. See Andy Reid's face on a TV over there. Um, you can find us on YouTube and subscribe. Please hit the notification button so you know when we go live. And we'll be back Thursday uh, with another episode from Indianapolis right here. Obvious where all the merch is as well. We will talk to you Thursday. See ya.